How does Pastor Rick glad you with me today on Sharpen? Now today we're going to take a step forward here a little bit in our study in the book of Numbers. I'm really fascinated by how some people can have a really clear direction in their life. They, you know, they know what they want, but they don't get there. They don't get there because they allow themselves to be sidetracked. And a lot of us have been sidetracked. I have been sidetracked. And so look with me at the book of Numbers, and I want to show you a text. This is Numbers chapter 13, verse 17. Now, the other day I read the names. Maybe I should try that again, huh? Maybe. <laughs> Let's see it again. These are the guys that they sent to the promised land. We're going to make this happen. Shammah was one, right? Then there was a guy named Shephat. Now, I said his name wrong the last time. Then there was Caleb, and then there was Igal, and then there was Hashua, Hoshua, however you say it, it really is Joshua, same guy. Then Paltai, then Gadal, there's the name, and Gadi, and then Amiel, and then Sether, and then Nab, Nab, Nabi, they call it Nabi, uh, Nabdi, uh, Nabi, and then there was uh, Jewel. Now, those are the guys that they sent to the promised land, okay? And when they sent these guys, they gave them a specific job description, which they totally threw out the window. Because when they get there in Numbers chapter 13, verse 17, what they're going to do is they're going to take on a job description they were not given. They're going to give a judgment as to whether the children of Israel can conquer the land. That was not their assignment. Here's what their assignment was. Numbers 13, verse 17. When Moses sent them to explore Canaan, he said, Go up through the Negev and on into the hill country. See what the land is like and whether the people who live there are strong or weak. I want you to go and check this out. I want you to see if these people are strong or weak. Then he says this. He says, when you find that out, what kind of land do they live in? Is it good or bad? What kind of towns do they live in? Are they unwalled or fortified? How is the soil? Is it fertile or poor? Are there trees in, in it or not? Do you do your best, he said, to bring back some of the fruit of the land? It was the season of the first grapes. That was a job description. Their job was to go and to, to spy out the land. That's it. Now, here's what's interesting. Sometimes in life, you get, you get off. And you, and you start doing things that's not part of your job description. They come back, you read later on in the text, and they basically said, man, we can't, we can't be defeat those people. And I'll talk more about this later. But we, we can't defeat those people. It's impossible. But that wasn't your job description. Sometimes we get off because we're doing what isn't our job. It's not my job to determine how I'm going to win. The Bible says that, I, that no, no weapon formed against me will prosper. I'm not supposed to, to know all that. I don't have, my, it's not, that's not in my job description. My job description is to be obedient. My job description is to be faithful. That's my job description. Now, if I can keep that in mind and focus on that, I'm, I'm better off. But it's when I get out of my job description. It's when I start trying to figure out everything. Man, let me tell you, everything we do in ministry is expensive. It costs money, millions of dollars to, to, to touch the thousands of lives we touch, to do all we do. But my job description is to manage what I have, be diligent, be a good steward, and to keep trusting God. My job description is not to figure out what I can't figure out. That's not in my job description. Are you trying to do something that's not in your job description? It's not in your job description to find a husband. It's your job to live like somebody that's marriable. It's your job description to live a great life. It's your job description to travel and build assets and to, to save your money and to comb your hair and fix yourself up and look good. <laughs> that's your job description. Do your job and let God do his. Stop trying to do God's job. That's what got these guys in trouble. And, and they end up not going in the promised land because they kept getting out of their job description. And maybe that's what you're doing. Sitting there worried about stuff you can't control. I can't control all these people. I can't control what everybody does. I can't control all that happens in the government. That's not in my job description. I vote. I give my opinion. I speak up. But then that's my job. Now stick with your job description, would you please? Put all your worries, cast all your cares in the hand of the Lord. And, and just do your best and watch God work out the rest. Father, I thank you for those who listen today. Let these minutes be inspirational minutes that challenge them and lift them to a new place. I pray you give them courage and strength to trust you and to see beyond their fears and, and, and by faith hold on to what you said. And may they stay in their job description. In Jesus' name. I got to go. My name is Ricky Temple. I've enjoyed being with you for today. I hope that you got something out of this and I hope that you stay in your job description. Listen, stay faithful. Don't you lose hope. 
Link this and send it to a friend and tell them, man, you gotta get, this is amazing. This can help you. Stay in your job description. Be a wife, be a husband, be a child. Do your job, stay there, and watch God bless you. Bye-bye.